MMA Rants and Raves, Fedor Emelianenko versus Frank Mayer in the Bellator World Grand Prix Tournament. Guys, let's talk about this fight. You know something? Fighters have been asked about Fedor, his decline, and they say similar things. That Fedor didn't decline, but fighters just got better around him. I totally disagree with that. And it's evident that that is incorrect. Very evident. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go further than that. I'm going to say that not only has he declined, he declined substantially. He's not even close to the fighter he used to be. Now, of course, when fighters fight Fedor, they want to say he hasn't declined. Because if they win the fight, then they can get credit for saying, oh, I beat the best Fedor out there. Right? However, that's not the case. Now, I'm going to bring up some points that, that I haven't heard being brought up. All you have to do is look at Fedor back at the Pride. His most notable victory... This is a decisive victory, a hard-fought victory. One of his most toughest fights was against Mirko Krokop. Mirko Krokop, back in Pride, was an absolute destroyer. And all you need to do is look at Krokop when he fought Josh Barnett three times. A very high-level, accomplished wrestler, big, strong guy. He defeated a world champion, a UFC champion. You're not going to get that many more attributes than Josh Barnett. And he defeated him three times, and he even had top position. Barnett was having trouble taking him down. Krokop's legs were like a horse. I mean, just look at his fight against Mark Coleman, another strong wrestler. Couldn't even get close to taking him down. Trying to take that guy down is trying to uproot a tree from its roots. I mean, his takedown defense was legendary. Very tough guy to take down. And then you look at his fight against Fedor. Fedor steamrolled him. I mean, you could just see how he closed the distance. The speed and the velocity of his shots when he shot for takedowns. I mean, it was extraordinary. You could just see he just leveled Krokop time and time again in that fight. So you could just see how good he was. The explosion, the grappling, it was there. And now it's just not there anymore. I mean, you look at his past few fights. I mean, he fought Maldonado. Where's the takedowns? I mean, where are they? I heard he wanted a strike with him. Why would you want to strike with a guy, a very high-level, accomplished boxer with a good chin? Obviously, Maldonado's weakness is his ground game. Take the guy down. And then you look at Mitch Rione. I mean, he's standing square, shoulder to shoulder, against a guy like this. You know how dangerous Mitch Rione is? I mean, he is a world-class athlete. Big, strong guy. Hits real hard. I mean, he holds a knockout over Derek Lewis. And it was a quick knockout. I'm just saying, this guy hits real hard. He's powerful. I mean, what was he thinking? You know, try to work a takedown or something. Why isn't he doing it? Because maybe he can't. Maybe it's just not there anymore. The explosion isn't there anymore. The speed isn't there anymore. So what is he doing? Just standing and brawling with guys? I mean, you're not going to win an MMA like that. That is a decline. It's obvious. Now, if you look at Frank Mir, he actually had a resurgence in the UFC before he exited. And that's besides his last fight against Mark Hunt. You know, there's a long list of fighters that have been knocked out by Mark Hunt. So, it's not like it was a steep decline. Now, you can say that Fedor had a resurgence after the Bigfoot Silver fight, but he didn't fight accomplished UFC caliber heavyweights. Frank Mir did. And he won against them and had some close fights against them as well. So, he looked good in his resurgence. So, if you look at that aspect of it, I would say Frank Mir at this point in his career, holds an advantage in his fight. I mean, I have not been impressed with Fedor. I mean, he just looks reckless. I mean, to a certain extent, Fedor has shown that he's been reckless in his career. Back then, he was well-rounded reckless. Now he's one-dimensional reckless. Going in there and just brawling. You're not going to have success doing that, fighting high-level heavyweights. And Mayer is a high-level heavyweight. So again, you know, he's declined substantially. I mean, he's not even close to being the same fighter he used to be. And then you can even make a claim about the power. I mean, just think about this. He hit Maldonado with so many shots, and he could not put him away. And then, you look at when Stipe fought Maldonado, and he basically put him away with one shot. Now, of course, you can't do MMA math. Of course, it's where the punch lands. And, of course, it depends if the fighter's expecting the punch. You know, like being blindsided or not expecting it, and that's when the knockouts come. And, of course, Maldonado was coming in, but, I mean, you can make that claim. When was Fedor's last knockout against a legit heavyweight? I mean, it's been quite a while. 
I mean, he's throwing a lot of punches, and where is it going? I mean, where's the well-rounded game? I mean, look, even go all the way back to the fight against Bigfoot Silva. I mean, I just don't understand what was going on. I mean, in that situation, it should have been Fedor trying to get Bigfoot Silva down, right, with the explosive takedowns, like the ones he had against Mirko Krokop. But instead, he wants to stand and trade, and it was Bigfoot Silva going for the takedown. The reality is, eventually, after age and wear and tear, fighters just can't do the things they used to. But that being said, it's still a tough fight to call. Fedor still displays power, but... If he comes in this fight one-dimensional, I just don't think it's going to work out for him. So I'm going to go to prediction here. I have Frank Mayer to win this fight. I would like to know what you think about the fight. Please leave your comments. Please subscribe. Please like up this video. And thank you for tuning in.